All right, so we've been talking about Bible study. We've been talking about the, the three stages of Bible study, observation, interpretation, application. And so I thought, why don't we talk a little bit about the importance of application? So I wanted to invite some really smart guys. So we've got two doctors here, right? I'm clearly the dumbest guy at the table. We've got uh, Dr. Jeff Martell, Dr. Richard Fisher. And I just wanted to ask you guys, observation. Okay, so um, a lot of people, when they do Bible study, they either want to study the Bible and just jump right to application. Like, what does this mean to you? Or maybe they want to jump right into interpretation, like go to commentaries or, or look at their, you know, look at their, their study notes in their Bible. So why is observation so important, right? Like, why is this such a critical step and what happens if a person skips this step or misses this step? So I want to get you guys' thoughts on that. Yeah. Observation. Yeah, yeah it reminds me when I first uh, became a, a believer and like I was so excited, you know, and I got, and my, actually my dad got me a Bible, so I get my Bible and I open it up. I don't even know where I start. I just open it up and I just start reading. And I'm like, and it's good. You know, I had no background, no context for anything. But I just start reading and I start learning, right? And I'm excited. And then I grow in my faith. You know, time goes by. I grow in my faith. And I, and I learn a little bit more about like background and context. And I read the same thing that I read, you know, a year ago or two years ago. And all of a sudden, I realized that there's depth and there's layers there mm -hmm. that I had no idea about, you know, because I didn't understand the context. So it's like Philippians, right? Like I can read Philippians. The big theme of Philippians is joy, sure. right? So I could read Philippians when I, when I first was a believer, and it's like, yes, the joy of the Lord, you know? And I'm excited about it. And then as I understand the context, you know, it's not just words on a page. It's this guy writing to this group of people. And the group of people is a people that, you know, are, are experiencing some persecution. And a guy is a guy writing from prison, you know? And so you think about, like, the depth of joy that, I mean, it just totally changes the context. You think, he's writing this from prison to a group of people who's being persecuted to have joy in the Lord. It changes everything. You know? Oh, yeah, man, that's got to be, because you're right. It, I like the way you put it. It goes from being words on a page yeah. to suddenly you're like, wow, there, there's a context. And when you realize the context, it just, the whole yeah. thing just blows up. Yeah. So that, that's awesome. Yeah, that's great. I think one, also, one of the things that also is important is that the Word of God is very valuable. Mm. And you want to make sure you sort of get it. Like, like Paul said when he was writing Timothy, he said, all scripture is God-breathed. And, and so that's powerful. And when you look at that God-breathed, it's God's breath. Mm -hmm. And it, it's almost like God is speaking to me. Like these are the very words of God. How would you like to have an interview with God? And you go up to him and say, uh, uh, God, uh, you know, uh, this is what I think you ought to say. <laughs> you hear, I want you, because this is what I'd like to hear. No, you wouldn't do that. You actually want to hear what God says. You want to pay attention to it. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the things is when we come to the Word of God, we come to it to hear what God says. So that means we're going to observe. Uh, we, we appreciate We're excited about it. We want it to change our lives. Mm -hmm. And when you, when you come up with that attitude, I think you're saying, I want to pay attention. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to come in and say, this is what I want it to mean to me. Mm -hmm. or This is what John said. Down the street, you know, my buddy John, or even yeah. if you look at some commentary, this is what they said, God. So I'm, I'm sort of, I like what they said. Mm. You know, you're coming to find out what God says. I think commitment to observation is actually being committed to who God is and what God is saying. So you're laying this foundation before you begin to say, oh, I see how it would apply to my life now. Yeah. But it's based on what God says, not what I say. And, there, yeah. and there's a wrestling there, you know, I think that comes with that. Like, it's easy to, like, we're, we're always in a rush, right? Like, mm -hmm. it's, yeah. it's, we want to rush ahead to interpretation and application. But there's a, there's a wrestling that happens that I think God's Spirit does with our spirit mm. when we, like, slow down, you know, dig in, understand mm -hmm. more than just the little passage that we're looking at, like what is before, what is after, what's going on in the life of the guy who's writing it, what's going on in the lives of the yeah. people who are receiving this letter. Yeah. I think there's a wrestling that happens when we slow down and dig in deeper that God does, God's spirit does inside of our spirit. I love it. So if I'm hearing you guys right, it's kind of like <clears throat> you're saying observation. It almost gives space for the Holy Spirit to, to interact with you. So before you want to find out what someone else said about it or before you want to inject your own thoughts into it, you're allowing room and space and observation for the Holy Spirit to kind of speak with you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, um, when we come to the Word of God, we do come with presuppositions. Mm -hmm. And I think if we, and you have to realize that that's always going to be, 
But if you come with so many presuppositions that you don't give place to the Spirit of God or to the Word of God, you hamper what you really want to happen later. Mm -hmm. It's sort of like falling in love with a, a person. Mm -hmm. They're really, this is a, this woman you really like being around her, she's a beautiful girl, you don't know much about her, but you can you envision all oh, this wonderful thing that's gonna happen. And so you just get married. <laughs> but you're in love with an idea, mm. with all these thoughts, but if, to really have a marriage that's worth entering into, let me practically speaking, when you, you actually want to get to know this person. So you don't marry a person just because you like the way they look. You don't marry a person just because they laugh at your jokes. Yeah, sure. You marry a person because you've fallen in love with them because you spent time with them. You learn how they are. It's the same way with God's Word. Mm. You know, if you come with God's Word and you say, Wow, this is God's Word, man, I can't wait. It's mm. going to change my life. And I like it to change this and this and this. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. I mean, what you've done is that you, if you don't give time to the observation to find out what God is really saying, to, mm. to, to understand and enter into it, then really it's not going to be a benefit with you longer on down the road. Although at first, you're, oh, man, you, this is great. Yeah. But take your time. I love that idea. Take yeah, your time. That's good. Start observing. Find out where God's going. Find out how his word is able to build into your life. And then if you, as you go through this stage, then when you say, man, this is what it means to me, yeah. then it's totally different. Man, yeah. valuable stuff, man, valuable stuff. And, you know, clearly you guys both have a lot of good feedback on That's why we invited doctors to the table. So great insight, guys. Thanks for your time. Some awesome stuff on observation.